climate change. It sucks, which is why society has been working diligently on solutions to such a phenomenon. And one that comes to mind is carbon capture and storage. But what is it? It is a technology that captures the carbon dioxide emissions produced from power generation or industrial activity and transporting it deep underground where it will be stored. But is the technology effective against climate change and removing pollution? Well, let's see. Carbon capture projects have a baseline target of 90% efficiency. Because this is the minimum efficiency required for an investment to be worthwhile in the first place and it's doable. But even with such efficiency, there are severe obstacles. For instance, untreated exhaust from a coal-fired power plant can contain as much as 300 times the carbon dioxide levels in the Earth's atmosphere. So 90% isn't going to cut it, as it still leaves a lot behind. Even removing 99% of CO2 from such an exhaust leaves the Earth with carbon dioxide that is equal to or higher than its atmosphere. To make matters worse, once this technology achieves 90% efficiency, increasing its efficiency even further will be exponentially harder and more expensive as in, it will cost more and be more difficult to increase capture efficiency from 90% to 100% rather than from 80% to 90%. This is because it's easier to capture a higher concentration of CO2 in one area as more molecules flow through. But once most are captured, the CO2 molecules are much more spread apart so it's harder to capture the remaining carbon molecules. There are only a few dozen carbon capture and storage projects globally that have surpassed 95% efficiency, meaning to reach even 98% efficiency, power plants may need more incentive, such as carbon pricing, where plants are taxed based on carbon emissions. This could encourage the market system to invest more in carbon capture to avoid the tax burden. According to a report by the IEA, in one scenario, carbon capture contributes 9% to cuts in CO2 emissions, in contrast to 37% from efficiency improvements and 32% from renewables and so it may already be a significant solution against climate change. Of course, there has been progress in the realm of carbon capture within international organisations and countries. The European Union has a steadfast commitment to combating climate change, so much so that they are not only in favour of the Paris Climate Agreement, but have created their own climate initiative called the European Green Deal. If that sounds familiar, the name was somewhat inspired by the American Green New Deal, and I even did a video breaking it down. One of the core aims of this European Green Deal is cutting emissions by 55% based on 1990s measurements by 2030 and carbon capture is a vital part of this endeavour, so much so that carbon capture will be funded via the 10 billion euro EU Innovation Fund, as well as revenues from 450 allowances of the EU Emissions Training System. Also another topic I did a video on. Of course, they obviously won't get the whole amount since these projects will also fund renewables and industrial low carbon processes. In another part of the world, not so fond of the EU, the United Kingdom has their own thoughts on how to take advantage of carbon capture technology. For example, one hypothetical scenario indicates that integrating the technology in gas-fired or biomass power plants within the power sector is essential for flexible electricity generation. Unfortunately, such a scenario assumes a 95% capture rate in contrast to the usual 90% efficiency estimate. Obstacles are further compounded by the slow pace of the UK's deployment of carbon capture technologies as there are no carbon capture and storage facilities currently being built or operated at the time of this study. Yet the UK government's Department of Business and Industrial Strategy is optimistic about carbon capture, again assuming a 95% capture rate. 45 metric tons of carbon dioxide is expected to be captured within the power sector from existing natural gas. The emissions from this sector make up 12% of the UK's emissions. Yet, given the slow pace of current deployment and lack of incentives, there's uncertainty in how CCS will be deployed in the future. Carbon dioxide storage works by injecting the extracted CO2 deep underground in certain reservoirs for permanent storage sealed by an impermeable layer of rocks to prevent it from coming back to the atmosphere. In terms of global CO2 storage capacity, the estimations vary and have many uncertainties but do suggest that there is potentially enough capacity to satisfy the current global demand for carbon storage. Of course, storage capacity depends on the region such as the US, China and West Europe, making up nearly half of all global carbon dioxide storage. 
There are concerns that carbon dioxide may be leaked from the storage sites, but carbon storage is safe if storage sites are properly selected, characterized, and managed. In terms of financing, the revenue of most carbon capture projects is dependent on enhanced oil recovery, and this was emphasized by falling oil prices since 2020. But their revenue problems are also linked to, quote, the scale, complexity, and consolidated nature of CCS projects, which face similar challenges to nuclear in terms of deployment, unquote. This has made carbon capture projects very risky for businesses, making it a big barrier for development, and may be a reason why other renewable projects like solar and wind have been deployed at a faster rate. It has been argued that state intervention is required to de-risk such investments, especially for transport and storage. Overall, while carbon capture can be safe in storing emissions, it has available a large enough global storage capacity to trap the CO2 and some significant progress of deployment in regions like Europe. There has also been slow progress in countries like the UK, lack of incentives for carbon capture, revenue problems, relatively higher risks for the private sector, as well as high costs slash obstacles in increasing the efficiency of carbon storage past 90% efficiency. Hence, carbon capture and storage may be one of many solutions to climate change, but its various limitations, whether scientific or policy-wise, means it will not be a relatively significant innovation against climate change. It's unfortunate that carbon capture won't be that helpful, but you may be wondering why I made this video in the first place, since this isn't my usual type of video at least for over a year. Well, this video is in preparation for a much bigger video, which will compare the European Green Deal and AOC's Green New Deal proposal. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give a like and comment as it really helps my video in the YouTube algorithm. And if you like economics and political commentary, consider subscribing. Maybe follow me on my Twitter and see you later.